Welcome to the Idea to Value podcast, where in every episode we highlight the latest insights into creativity and innovation from experts around the world. I'm your host, Nick Skillicorn. I care about the evidence behind what makes ideas happen, and I've already helped thousands of people just like you through my unique insights into recent scientific findings of how creativity works. I also show you how to turbocharge innovation programs so they finally deliver on the value and ideas you've been struggling to execute. Get your free training on how creativity can be improved by registering now at www.ideatovalue.com. Now let's get on with today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Idea to Value podcast. I'm very happy to have Catherine Aura with me today. Catherine is a business PR strategist and founder of The Artist Entrepreneur. And today we're going to be talking about artists and how they value themselves and their work. Catherine, it's wonderful having you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you today. So, Catherine, for those of uh, us who aren't aware of you or your work, can you give us a little bit of background as to what you do and how you got there? Absolutely. Well, like you said, I'm a business and PR strategist and I'm, uh, I focus my work, although I've worked many years as a generalist, uh, I focus my work today after studying uh, the business of art at Christie's and working in art galleries, art, art uh, fairs and on the art market. I now specialize in helping artists, uh, more specifically visual artists, uh, position themselves in the market. Um, adopt a more entrepreneurial mindset and uh, sell their work and build uh, profitable, but more importantly, sustainable uh, businesses. Now, I heard you mention Christie's there. Is that the large auction house? Yes, exactly. So when I was in my 20s, I was working as a corporate PR uh, manager. And then I, I went up the corporate ladder. I was director of a corporation, multinational corporation, and I was doing PR, and I had employees, and I had a really good job, but I was really unhappy um, because I always wanted to work in the arts, but um, many situations um, made it that I didn't choose that path uh, when I was uh, studying. But after a few years working in corporate sector, I knew that this wasn't uh, my calling, so I decided to quit my job and move continents. So I moved to France and that's where I joined the auction house who had a, an educational program uh, geared towards learning how the art market really operates because it's a very opaque uh, industry. Um, you can't just learn about it by reading or watching. Uh, you need to be in it. So we had a very hands-on approach and I studied there for a full year art history, art market, and uh, that's what led me afterwards uh, to um, work with art galleries and art fairs, and now directly coaching artists um, to build their business and sell their art, because I've had the experience hands-on to sell art, so I totally understand how that works, and now I'm happy to help others do it themselves. I mean, uh, art is one of the most subjective uh, things that's, that's possible to discuss. And when you look at situations where auction houses like Christie's are selling pieces of work for millions of dollars or even just hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's, it's very hard, as you say, to understand what goes into that valuation and what goes into that pricing. So can you tell us any secrets of the art market, uh, any sort of behind the doors tips and tricks that the people in it use to get their valuations as high as possible? <laughs> uh, well, I will tell you some, I can start by telling you something that I did not learn at Christie's, but I learned at a very young age when I was studying PR and, and that applies to your question. Perception is reality. Perception is everything, right? So it's all about branding it's all about positioning and it's all about how the public perceives you. So just when you said, oh, are you talking about Christie's, that big international auction house, right? So already when we're thinking about Christie's, there's an image that comes to mind, right? An image of prestige, an image of quality, right? People trust that what's going to be presented at auction at Christie's just because it's at Christie's and that they're specialists, 
had a chance to examine the piece and um, approve it, right? Um, then automatically we have that trust factor that kicks in and we kind of take it at face value that the price that they're gonna be asking or the estimate that is they're putting out there is fair, right? So, but the truth is it's a lot of it is again, perception. The difference between, I just wanna make a difference here, um, the particularity of auction houses um, is that everything is public, right? So you can see um, the evolution of pricing and value of an artist and their artwork, uh, because all the prices, the, val the estimates and the price that are sold are public information. So from one auction to the other, you can see the price going up or going down. So if you decide to have a private transaction with an artwork from that artist, you have something to go and consider uh, to make your own offer or asking price. Now, it's only a very small portion of artists who, are, who, trans, who have transaction on the auction house. Most of them is either through galleries or selling direct. And that's where it becomes tricky because we have no information about what is sold either on the primary, on the primary market when people are buying and selling through a gallery or through their studio, right? There's no way of knowing what these prices are. So that's where there starts to be some sort of disconnect or op opacity around pricing because it's very hard for an artist to know how much they should price their art because they can't, they rarely can compare their sales with the really, really high end market that is the Christie's and Sotheby's, but then everything else, there's no information or very little information. Um, only if you know where to try to, where to find it. I mean, not only that, a lot of artists by their very nature um, are sometimes not that comfortable uh, pricing themselves high or, or just uh, talking about monetary issues. So what, what work do you do with artists? You said at the beginning, you help them um, value themselves properly. How, how do you do that? Well, at first, I think you need to understand who you are as an artist and what is it that you want for your career and where do you see yourself growing? What's your vision, right? Because um, depending on where you want to position yourself on the market, right, like any other product or service, right, uh, it's going to be the, the price that you're going to ask for your artwork is going to be different, right? If so, so that's the first thing. The first thing I make them do an exercise on vision and where they see themselves growing uh, as an artist, where they want to sell their work and to whom, who their market is, right? Because it's one thing to say how much you think your art is worth, which is usually um, <laughs> it's not based on much, right? Um, oh, how much time it takes me to do something or how much study that I made. But really what's important is how much your market is willing to pay for your work, right? Because at the end of the day, you need to have a market that's going to buy your art. So the first part is to understand with what are you creating and with what you're creating, uh, which market you're going to be operating in. And then like with any other um, industry, I recommend doing market research. And I don't know why, but a lot of artists don't think that they need to do that. And I don't know why, because you need to understand the market in which you operate and you need to understand the people that you're selling to how much they're willing, as how far they're willing to go in terms of price points, right? So for, and, and in, but in the art world, there's this other component is that if you want to position yourself high end, which is usually what I help my artists do, position themselves high end, um, you have to be careful because if you pri price yourself too low, there's going to be a whole section of the market, the high-end market, that's not even going to consider you because their price is not high enough. 
because unfortunately it's still the market is still perceived that the value of the art is there's a correlation between the price and how good an artwork is which anyway we could debate on that it's not because an artwork is pricey that it's necessarily good but it's still how a lot of people um, perceive the, the the value of an art piece but I'm sure the advice doesn't stop there. I mean, you can't just tell uh, an artist to uh, charge $100,000 for a painting that they would have previously uh, charged $100 for and expect the entire business to change. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the, what are the other aspects uh, that go along with uh, raising the, the perceived value? No, but that's the thing, right? And that's, I think we, you skip the part where I tell you, tell them the, to do a market research. <laughs> because if they don't like because that's also where they understand if their artwork fits for the market that they're trying to operate in right like just to take two very distinct examples right if you're in a very um if if you you do art that's very decorative uh maybe it's very pretty right but it's very decorative and you're trying to position yourself in a high-end market that is mostly interested in conceptual work, you can increase your price as much as you like. They're not going to be interested in your work because that's just not what that market, you're not, you're not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, there's no need for your, you're, you're not filling in a need, right? So it's, you're not, you're, you're not choosing the right niche. You're not choosing the right market to sell your work. So obviously you need to do some market research. You need to look at who sold in that market before, what's been selling, what's doing well, and is your art a comparable or not, right? And, um, especially, and then it depends on what sales channels also, like what's your business model, right? So when I say like what market you want to operate in and what's your business model. So for artists who, uh, for instance, want to start a business where they'll be selling mostly online. So right now, a lot of people are coming to me and saying, I want to sell on Instagram. I want to sell online. How do I sell online? And a lot of um, reports on um, selling art online show that this is a trend that's growing um, exponentially. The more art buyers, collectors, galleries, and um, curators are now on Instagram and looking for artists, looking at what artists are doing and even buying work from artists. Um, but we also know that right now, uh, the market is not yet mature in that sense that work that sells is work under three to $5,000 right so again like you need to understand the market you're operating in because you can't just say oh i'm going to start selling my work a hundred thousand dollars and oh i'm just going to open an instagram account and it's going to sell obviously not <laughs> there needs to be a branding strategy there needs to be a marketing strategy there needs to be a sales strategy but you also need to understand the sales channels and the business model that you're developing to uh price yourself accordingly if that makes sense. I, it, it definitely does. I can just imagine <laughs> some artists might get a bit uh, overwhelmed by the concept of having to do business models and sales strategies and uh, all of these other things. Is, is there a way that you sort of can coach people through that or uh, take some of the fear out of it? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. So I think uh, a couple of things. Yes, it can seem overwhelming to hear all these terms and say, like, I haven't, like, how can I do this? I didn't understand half of the sentence that Catherine just said. Uh, but you know what? The beautiful part is you can learn it. It's really not that complicated. If I've figured it out, anybody else can. Um, but first you need to be come with an open, I say come with an open mind and an open heart, right? Because like you said, um, there's a lot of resistance that shows up. Um, I shouldn't have to be doing this. Why isn't there an agent taking care of this? Why isn't there a gallery? Well, you know, I would love for it to be that way. It was like that 10, 15 years ago. It's just not like that anymore. Even the galleries now 
rely on the artist to do a lot of the branding marketing work uh, on their end. So yes, you need to learn it. Um, but I mean, no, you don't need to learn it. If you don't want to learn it, that's fine. Just keep art as a hobby. <laughs> but if you want to make it a business, if you want to make it a living, make it a sustainable, then you need to start being interested. And, and when I say interested, I say, just start being curious. Just start by being curious about it, right? Reading what's going on in the art market, following a few artists that are successful, just observing, being curious, seeing how they do things. Um, and then um, it's all about finding support, finding either mentors, coaches, people in your community um, that can help you package an offer um, that's going to feel good to you to get started. And what I recommend is always start small because that way you have the opportunity to make mistakes, learn from them and do better next time. I would rather you do that and then grow and raise your prices because as you're raising your prices, the people who bought from you, the value of the work that they purchased keeps increasing. So I would rather you start slow and build and grow instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to put my prices super high and see what happens. And then you start panicking because you're not selling. And then again, because you're panicking, you lower your prices and that's never good for your branding and your marketing. So um, I say just be curious and also surround yourself with maybe people who are a little more business oriented. So I have a group program that's called the Artist Entrepreneur Lab and we have artists from all over the world that come in and I'm there to coach them but also they support each other and it's all, all like-minded people. So it's really good that yes, I'm in and I can support everybody in there, but also for other artists to see that it's possible to make it and that they're not alone in their questions, their struggle. And I'm always also happy to see when artists in the lab find mentors in their community who are willing because they are themselves business owners or maybe corporate uh, executives that say to an artist to say, you know what, I've got the skills, I've got the know-how, how about I take you in and I help you develop your strategy? Because there's a lot of people out there that have the know-how and if you're a little bit curious, if you're a little bit interested, um, there's a lot that you can learn and you can build slowly your business and grow your revenue and grow the value, build the value of your art. Catherine, it's been wonderful speaking with you today. We're coming up to the end, but uh, if people do want to find out more about you and your work, what's the best way to, for them to find it? Uh, well, they can uh, check out our website. It's called theartistentrepreneur.com. And uh, I'm also on Instagram. Uh, my handle is my full name, Catherine Horaire, O-R-E-R. -E and just message me tell, me. tell me you heard me on this podcast, and I'll be more than happy to... Um, answer any question you might have. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to speaking again with you soon. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe and leave me a comment about what you thought and what you'd like to see more about. If you want to take your creativity and innovation capabilities to the next level, then invest in yourself with the premium training only available at ideatovalue.com. These exclusive training modules have all been put together by me, Nick Skillicorn, and have been used by thousands of artists, innovation leaders, and CEOs to become better at understanding the source of their creativity and executing on their innovation ambitions. And there is no risk to new, as they are backed by our money-back guarantee. Now, don't forget to go out there and make your ideas a reality. See you again soon.